Welcome everybody to our journey in faith. This is going to be a new series I'm starting up. It's going to be about my own passion project um, that I'm working on, which is my Adeptus Sororitas Army. Yeah, I know I have a Closet Sisters Army. It is wonderful. Um, I've been inspired recently by Jeffrey Kaladner's performance, not just at the Tampa U.S. Open, um, but at the World Championships of Warhammer, which I personally attended, and that was in a really awesome tournament. It kind of lit a fire back underneath me, which I think is really cool to explore my competitive side again, especially because I'm um, competing for, on the WTC on Team America, or at least hoping to be on the actual playing team. Uh, but I've qualified for like the team team, I guess. Um, and it's going to be back, so I want to do my best and to try and get better at Warhammer I think I need to explore factions outside of the things I've played recently um, to just expand my horizons. And Sisters um, did so well under Jeffrey's hands at the World Championships of Warhammer going 7-1. And, and going 7-1 in that field, I think he went 6-2 in that field actually, but going 6-2 and two in that field is something really impressive. So I was taken aback by that and then similarly timing wise... Um, sisters are showing up in other locations, like Vic VJ, one of our war members. He just won a D GT with a totally different list from Coventry. Um, so all this is kind of happening um, at the same time that I'm like becoming inspired about Sisters, which is really cool and exciting. So uh, I think Sisters are a very deep faction. I think they have a lot of ability to express, express player skill. They allow you to really outplay people in the specific situation you're in on the tabletop um, because they create unique game states. And it also helps 40k in terms of keeping it fresh and exciting. Um, with Chaos Space Marines, which I've been playing for so long, um, it's the same couple game plans over and over. At least it boils down to anyway on a very philosophical level. So I'm excited to try something totally and radically different, uh, both in terms of army type and play style. Um, I do have a sister's army. I've played it since 8th edition. Um, I busted it out. I like got all these models. I'm like, oh, wow, I have all these models. I can just start playing. And as I started like actually trying to put the list that I wrote on the table, it was really fun to see that I didn't actually have nearly the models I, th I need for modern day sisters. Times do be a change. And you just have more stuff in your army than you used to. It's really weird. So I'm very excited for sisters. I think they're an army that really suits my personal play style really well. Um, which I, I was finding an internal clash between Chaos Space Marines, which I've been playing pretty much all 10th edition, um, and my own self. Like, I'm a very defensive, reactive, passive player. I look for openings in my opponent's um, plan, and I try to exploit them. Um, I like to react to people. Or CSM is a much more proactive army. They're very aggressive. Um, and it, I'm really glad I went on my CSM journey because I think it taught me how to be aggressive when I needed to be. 10th edition really rewards that kind of play style more than... Uh, ninth or eighth or any of its predecessors um, but with sisters I hope to take some of this aggression and allow it to do what it does with a normally more middling conservative sisters army because I would say sisters are a mid-board control army whereas chaos is just proactive control aggression but anyway this is going to be a journey about my exploration of sisters as a faction I'm going to talk about um the first week, this episode, we're going to talk about literally what my first week exploring Sisters has been like. You're basically one week behind from when I started Sisters last week, so that is pretty much where we're at. We're going to catch you up to speed, and then I don't know what the story is going to unfold. Um, I think that's part of the beauty of this series. It's very much a passion project. Um, we're going to go through my goals for this series. We're going to go through my goals for playing Sisters. We're going to go through what my past week has looked like because it's been filled with Sisters in battle. And uh, we're going to take it from there. So buckle in. For those of you also who maybe missed the strategy session series and, and we're looking for a coaching match recap, as I get more comfortable with sisters and as I get deeper into it, I'll do coaching match recaps with, from their perspective and their army. Still, nothing does it go on anyone. We can always add more to the rest repertoire if they're sorely missed. So please, if you want to see those coaching match recaps in the description or the war room video section in our Discord, please just go ahead and tag us. And if you're watching this on YouTube, do us a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, really helps us grow. So without further ado, let's get into it. My goals through this 
series and through my journey as a sister player are become proficient enough with sisters that I get to play them for Team America. One of the things that's really exciting to see um, with Team America and the growth, and this is the team that goes to the World Team Championships every year, um, is that there's more than just like eight players and you don't necessarily know that you're playing once you're selected. I believe there's like a pool of 12 to 16 players right now, probably like 16, that are all very, very, very skilled Warhammer players. And pretty much all of them would deserve a spot on the team. That's where they are. But at the end of the day, only eight players get to play. And eight players on eight different factions. And there's every reality that you don't know what armies are going to be good. So you're kind of guessing that I hope this army is going to be good in six months by time WTC rolls around, so I'm selected. Um, selection for Team America officially happens in April. Um, I'd really like to make the playing side of the team. It's one of my favorite things to do every single year. Um, it means a lot to me, um, and I want to represent my country as best I can. So to do that, um, I want to really become proficient, mastery level with the faction. And I was doing that with Chaos Space Marines for a while. Um, but what I found with Chaos Space Marines is that one, they became incredibly popular because they were obviously proven to be very good. Sisters, I don't think, are going to have that thing with about them. They just typically don't become that popular as an army archetype for whatever reason. Um, and they don't seem that powerful. Or maybe with a codex they could become that powerful. But as of today, they are really um, a subtle power army, which is not the kind that people bandwagon onto. Um, beyond that, Chaos and I don't jive. Like As much as I, I was playing Chaos because it's holding an army in my wheelhouse, and I love Chaos, um, it's in a very aggressive army, and I'm not that aggressive. So there's always that little bit of a of a divide between myself as a player and the army I was playing. And I felt that in tournaments. And it doesn't make much difference in most of your games. You can execute the strategy and tactically well all day long. But in those really, really tight games, the instinct, when you don't know what to do because you've never been in this situation before, totally uncharted territory of Warhammer, you and your opponent are exploring, your instincts aren't right. And that is what kills you. So... Um, I'm hoping with Sisters I'll have better instincts from the four games I've already played with them. They've already felt much better in my hands than Chaos has. Um, I don't feel like I don't know where to put my models on the table, if that makes any sense. With Chaos, I had to learn where to put my models on the table. With Sisters, it was kind of intuitive, which I really liked. Um, not that my positioning is perfect. I'm brand new to this faction, but um, the what do I do with this thing isn't there, which is really strange because I haven't played Sisters in like four years, but it is really cool to see I'm very much about it. Um, we'll see where it goes from there. So I want to take Sisters to LVO, which is like along the stop to Team America. It's a great check-in point. It's before team selection. I get to really show my muster. Uh, I, you know, get, get a lot of experience with Sisters there. Um, so I want to take Sisters to LVO and I want to do my best with Sisters. And usually I don't know what I'm taking to LVO up until like list submission week, like January. I'm locking in. I don't have delusions that Sisters are the best faction in the world. Um, but I'm really into Sisters right now. And I want to lock in and I want to just get really good at Sisters. And I think they're kind of the kind of army that really rewards you for putting the time and the reps and understanding what they do. So... Uh, I'm going to lock in the sisters right now, call my shot, we're going to LVO with sisters. And with that, I get to update my ancient sisters army. And I do mean it's ancient, unfortunately. It's uh, it's the old metal models like that are monopose and everything, pretty much from all my infantry. I have the old metal exorcist. I have two new immolators. I have new Repentia. Um, but I don't... I do have new Zephyrim. I have old Seraphim. I don't have many of the new characters. <clears throat> And I don't have any Penitent Engines, Mortifiers, um, that kind of stuff. So I don't have any Archiflagellants. Those are good too, I hear. So we're going to have to update our army. And with that, I'd like to finish it. A lot of the stuff is kind of like, not half painted, but like, I never finished it. I got it to a very presentable point. I never took it all the way. And some stuff I need to just get from scratch. So the goal is to have this army be good looking by LVO. And it needs to become WYSIWYG. It's so far from WYSIWYG it hurts. Um, everybody's just got a bolter. Back then you had to pay for upgrades, you know? It was a different time. So, I, the last thing is really... This is a personal one. It's a lesson I learned from playing Chaos Space Marines for the past six months or so. Explore the unexplored and have more confidence with list building. So, this is a two-parter. Explore the unexplored is like a mantra I live by when it comes to Warhammer and, and ideally most things. Um, 
there's so much depth to Warhammer as a game right now that you can really just go in and sisters are no different. And I've had so many ideas and I don't know if people have tried them, but I know a lot of people aren't talking about them. Um, and most of them have not been good from what I found so far, but some of them have been gems and we're going to talk about that. Um, but then here's the other thing. And I, just, I do that with Chaos Space Rings, I do this Demons, I do this with every rain play. Is I try things, and if I think something's good, I'll give it. I'll put it on the board and give it another shot. Um, but then here is the part I've never really had to identify myself as struggling with, but I'm, I'm going to be self-critical and say here it is. Have more confidence with list building. Now, I professionally coach people. I literally sell list advice to people for years. You know, I, I this is not what I'm trying to convey, as I don't know what I'm talking about. What I'm saying here is that. When I was working on Chaos Space Rings, I'm going to tell a story. I had a lot of accursed cultists as like, and, and anyone who was in the Chaos videos can tell you, like day one Nick was like, accursed cultists, MVPs. And anyone who's on the, in the discords or in the Chaos channels will also tell you, I hate obliterators. It's a meme within the Art of War community, how much I hate obliterators. And... I started my first few lists with Accursed Cultists, Spam, and No Obliterators, and Forge Trains, and I gave up Obliterators an honest shot, and, you know, they weren't for me. I was like, like, my first game I tried Obliterators, four of them, Mark of Undivided, Reroll Everything, failed to kill an Orc Truck, you know? Like, the universe was talking to me, and I was acknowledging it, but the social network of the world spoke a little louder right like my teammates are all telling me blitz are great and accursed cultists are, are not it because they you know reasons and my the the internet is telling me same things and similar things and i'm watching turn results like every good every list at the wtc last year was like eight obliterators 12 obliterators eight obliterators 12 obliterators so i'm like where's the only accuracy cults and it's like maybe i'm wrong and that's totally valid so then you start exploring things a little more conventional mainstream, especially that that was the early 10th edition, right? So like no one knew what was good. It's all just ideas. And I'm trying my Cursed Cultists. I'm having tough games. I'm trying to Cursed Cultists. having tough games. Having, trying to Bloodraiders. having tough games. Um, and eventually I worked myself up to like the MSU Chaos Space Spring list. I got 2 by 2 of Blitz. I got Chosen Rhino. It was Forge Fiends. I'm not going to say it's the most innovative thing I've ever played, but it was my version of it, and it's not like I copy-pasted it. Um, and... You know, I did okay at Worlds. I did fine. I did five and three. Yeah, above average for sure. In that field, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, but realistically, the list that won Worlds, credit where credit is due to Manny, was a combination of triple accursed cultists, chosen rhinos, and no obliterators. And all these amazing players, all these great minds, all these professional and, and like, might as well be professional Warhammer players... From all around the world, the, the super major winners of super major winners, only one person in the entire event combined three Accursed Cultus units with three units of Chosen Rhinos with no Obliterators. How? Groupthink is real. Groupthink is super real. And I'm not trying to imply that the Sisters community is all Groupthink. What I can tell, it's amazingly diverse with the armies that are doing well and i'm so super excited to jump in here um but what i'm saying is i really want to have confidence in my ideas my accursed cultists with no obliterator ideas and follow them through um so as much as i'm willing to explore the unexplored i need to give all of them more than one or two games i need to really really give them a shot if i believe in it if i believe in it i don't have to believe, give stuff a shot i don't believe in but if I believe in something and it has some rough matchups, it has some rough games, I need to stick with it longer. And if I reflect back to when I was most successful at Warhammer in terms of crushing tournaments, number one ITC player, that kind of stuff you years back, that was done when I just put the reps in with the same army times a thousand. And like, I lost games, whatever, let's try something else. Um, and, uh, let's try using it differently, you know, and that kind of thing really makes a difference. So, those are our goals. I know, it's got emotional, it's got deep. Now, a picture of John. <laughs> Why we have a picture of John? Well, because I don't know anything about sisters. This is literally the first time I've read the index since I since 10th edition dropped. I didn't even read them all when 10th edition dropped. I literally, sisters were one of those armies that I was like, I do not have time to also learn sisters. We got John on sisters. Like, this is a team division type of thing. Um, let me put this in the cabinet of I will read this index later. And then, because sisters weren't 
exactly popular, common, or good in the first months of not tenth edition. I never played against them. Um, coincidentally, I never streamed against them. Um, I never learned them. I just sisters out of sight, out of mind. It was only when Jeffrey Kalodner took us all out of Tampa, not me, um, but John Quentin and Jack sequentially with sisters that sisters even entered the conversation in the Art of War Streamhouse, and then. You know, that same week, like days later, I interviewed Jeffrey. He broke down Sisters of uh, the Death of Sauritas for me. And I was like, damn, this is real. This is a real army. What are we, why are we, are we all sleeping on this? This is a real army. So I then got a stream game lined up with John. Because I was like, John, I need to play against this. Like, put me in, coach. So I played some CSM versus Sisters. Amazing game. You can check it out on the on the stream house. John won with Sisters of Battle. So now the Sisters of Battle collectively have taken out John, myself, Jack, and Quentin, this bad faction, on all of our best factions, pretty much. And, you know, what is that? And this, this Sisters Army is not, apparently, the mainstream Sisters Army. When I say mainstream, I mean, if you look on the internet forums, the Sisters Act podcast, the Art of War Discord, there's basically, like, shout out to these great Sisters players and amazing community members as well. Um, Scott Ketchum, Vic VJ, Mitch, um, there's a few more. You guys are so welcoming. You guys are really, like, of all the Discord communities I've been a part of, like, the Sisters one is is really, really welcoming. And I don't mean disrespect to any other Discord means. We, I think every faction really does well, but you guys are great. So anyway, the sisters here that John and Jeffrey are playing are very similar to each other. And it's this balanced battle force of an army you see before you. We've got an Imagifier. We've got Morphin Vol. we got Palantine with the Blade. we got Celestine. 30 battle sisters on foot with some multi meltas and, and stuff. Two Immolators, two Castigators, three by two Crusaders, one solo Exorcist, the Paragons for Val, two solo Penitents, Retributors, these had multi Meltas, Seraphim, and Assassin. It's like a little battle force. Where's the 30 Arco Flagellants that everyone's talking about? Where's the Triple Exorcist that everyone's talking about? So if this is not only good in the hands of Jeffrey, but also good in the hands of John and beats our entire team, you know, maybe there's really something here. So, without having ever built or played Sisters before, I was really overwhelmed with options, and especially when you when you try to build Sisters list, it's like, everything's so cheap, and then you write a list, and you're like, this is 2,700 points. Because you took it all. You tried to take it all, and you can't take it all. Um, you, you have a million affordably good options, and you have to figure out what an optimal set is between all this. And so much of that is how you use it. So much of that is in this specific mission, this terrain, this deployment, all that. And when you consider all those factors, it's, it's really overwhelming with no frame of reference. So I did something I never do, and I copy-pasted Jeffrey Kalodner's list. This is John's list in front of us. I couldn't get a graphic of Jeffrey's, but I copy-pasted Jeffrey Kalodner's list from Worlds. It's very similar to this. It had no Exorcist, but, you know, more or less same thing. Um... And I just took it for a spin. I took it for two turns of a game on Tabletop Simulator against Joel Wilson and his Death Watch. And I liked what I felt. You know, I, I got most of my rules wrong, I'm sure. I literally forgot plus one to hit and plus one to win the army trait entirely. Um, but overall, I had a great time playing this game. For the two turns, it was pretty back and forth even. I have no idea who would have won. Um, we had to call it because I'm very, very slow at TTS. We're learning and uh, we got through like three and a half hours in two turns. So, um, good learning game. Good first game. Doesn't really count for much. It existed. Then I played Mark the next day with um, a revised list. Basically, very, very similar. I took a couple of Nick tweaks in because now I'm starting to feel a little comfortable with making tweaks, but more or less the same army. And I played against some Marks. Um, not wild Mark stuff, but also wild. Um, six Rhinos, six units of five Legionnaires, six units of Noise Marines, Lucius, and three chosen and three Chaos Lords. That's it, and a unit of cultists. You know, 60, six Rhinos, thirty dudes, punch, 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 punch. Six Rhinos, sixty dudes. Six Rhinos, sixty dudes. And it was more of an exercise of could I kill it all? Um, this was not a very serious game. This was kind of like over Thanksgiving weekend on like the Sunday kind of game. So like, Mark wasn't playing particularly tight or well. Left his backfield totally open to a deep strike attack from Celestine. Celestine then drew capture enemy outposts behind enemy lines. 
And it was one of those silly games. He could have easily screened that had he tried a little harder. Neither of us took it that seriously. It was very much me learning how to play Sisters a little bit more. So then we go um, to Monday. That was Sunday. This is this past Sunday. So then we go to Monday. And Monday is the day where I'm left to my own devices to list build. And I see tanks. All I can see is tanks. I see immolators and exorcists and mortifiers and penitent engines and paragons. And oh my god, the violence these tanks can commit. What do you mean I can get um, rhinos that have multi melters that split my squads in half and they're twin linked? What do you mean fate dice? What do you mean six little dreadnought things with feel no pain, strength 10, AP 2 and 3, every AP 3 and 2 damage, twin linked, heavy flamers, twin linked, heavy bolters? What do you, this is amazing. Every time they die, they give me Miracle Dice 6s, which fine. This is fantastic. Bring it down, who cares? Indirect fire, strength 10, boom, 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 everybody dies, paragons. So this was day two. And there was a little bit of madness on day two because uh, after more thought about the all tank army, it does have some problems. Someone even tried it at Worlds and they did pretty well, but they lost games because they had problems. Um, is not chaos knights, you know, like maybe, maybe not all tanks. Bring it down is a thing. So this is what day two yielded. I, a stream game versus Jack, which will go live, I believe next week could be the week after. I will see. I played against his orcs. Spoiler alert. I lost this game. Jack is very good. This is my first real full game with sisters, but this is the list I use. So we had a canonist with the Mantle of Ophelia. Now let me pause you right here because she has been amazing and I haven't seen anybody talking about her, but I will digress on her for a minute to finish the list. Um, we're doing the Dialogus with Triumph of St. Catherine combo here. We got Morven Vol joined to the Paragons. I got a Palatine with the Blade of St. Eleanor and I got St. Celestine joining some Zephyrin. Um, so the Palantine and the Dialogus join 10 Battle Sisters, and then Vol chill, or, uh, Triumph chills with that. And the combo is that the Palantine gives the unit lethal hits, both shooting and a melee. And the Dialogus makes any miracle die used in the unit count as a 6. And then the Triumph says you can use unlimited miracle dice on this unit. So you can just be like two multi meltas, two sixes. Two wounds, two multi melt wounds, Overwatch, three multi melt hit, two multi melt wounds and a melt gun wound. And in close combat, your character does mortal wounds, and also she's three damage and AP two, and you're just like five lethal hits. Because unlimited miracle dice and whatever numbers you happen to roll are just counting as sixes from the dialogue. So that's a little mini amazing unit. Then I have a ten man sister, ten girl sister squad, which I combat squad and an emulator. Paragons for Vol, five Zephyrim to join Celestine, five Retributors with multi melts and another Immolator, five Seraphim just on their own. I want a little nuts here with 3 by one Penta Engines, 3 by one Mortifiers, and a Calidus Assassin. So basically, how this all worked out was that the... I played against Orcs, and that's already not a great match for Sisters. I didn't have any Arcoflagellants. Which I believe is a mistake. Um, I wanted to try the value that was th six by three little engine things. I really liked emulators, but I wasn't realistically going to get six for a stream game. Um, and then Morven Vol and Paragons are just a great unit. Or so I thought. They had been in the two sort of games I played earlier. And what happened was basically Jack took Bring It Down and scored a 20 without even trying. Um... My solo mortifiers and penitent engines are very good, um, but they're not good enough if they auto brick it up, bring it down. Um, and then the paragons really let me down here. Part of that was my usage. I think I just got them charged a little too carelessly. I leaned really hard on the fact that orcs struggle with two up armor, um, but I did not consider like grenades and and tank uh, squig bomb things to do mortals to them. And ultimately, it got my paragons killed. So that wasn't wasn't great um and then my emulators like were largely roadblocks and then like a little annoying for jack to try to muscle through but they were killed um this game didn't go well i was dominated on primary and this was my first real attempt at a sister's list so 
from scratch. So I didn't love that. I basically resolved to take what I liked, take what I found worked from the previous few turns of Warhammer I had played with the other games, and kind of merge them and move forward. So I really like the Mantle of Canonist. She has a whole thing where once per game she has a two-up invul that's on her data sheet, and the Mantle of Ophelia lets me reduce all damage for the uh, all damage incoming turn to one. So I was able to pop a two plus invulnerable save and just walk into whatever I want, and it's tied up. And if it doesn't have fallback and do stuff, that's that's great for a little seventy point person. Um, Morvan Vol, I've really liked the Paragons. I I didn't like. I think as a three hundred twenty five point unit of four models, it's like too expensive, too easy to kill, um, not long enough range, uh, that kind of stuff. But as a 125 point solo vol that could stand back up, I wanted to give her a shot. I liked the Dialogus, Palatine, and Triumph, but I think you have to build very much around it. So I cut this whole thing um, in my next list, which we'll just cut over, but I don't think that this is bad. I think this is just a package you take together. I kept the Palatine because she's just an all star. I dropped the Paragons, like we talked about. I went down to two emulators, um, see how I liked that. I dropped the Retributors, and I don't dislike Retributors, but in the game I actually played the Kill 2 Squad Hug Boys. And that's not their fault, but it's, but that is what they did. Um, and I'm, I just cut some amount of Mortifiers and Pants and Engines, so we'll see how that goes. And we ended up creating this. Now this I liked a lot better. This one I've actually played as well, and we did much better. So I played the same Candace and Mantle Ophelia. I love her. I wanted to try the Demon of Huge, so it's kind of the opposite direction where I gave up a bunch of Bring It Downs. Now I wanted to see what would happen if I just leaned into Assassinate a little harder. Um, so the thing I love about the Demon of Huge is that they always strike first and they six and Troic for free. And then you have um, the Sacrifice strat to make people attack you. So basically leave them like lingering around your army wherever you think you're going to get charged. And then they heroic for free, and then they say, you must attack me, after they always strikes first and potentially actually do real credible damage. But you must attack me is the, is the real part here. And then you keep whatever you want safe. They do give up an assassinate point each, so giving up eight on that was pretty not good. Um, so they ended up getting cut after this game. Uh, Morven Vol, she's fine. Palatine was fine. Celestine, she's been great. Um, I cut her Zephyr out. I found Celestine's Zephyrm didn't really add much, and I, I don't regret it. I haven't gone back. Um, two by ten sisters. I added Arco Flagellants, and honestly, the 20 I had were awesome. Could totally see going up to 30. They're just great bodies. Um, I tried five Sacrosants. These didn't do anything. They're, they were just bodies to be bodies. Um, two Crusaders, two Exorcists. Now, we'll talk about Exorcists. Um, three Penitent Engines, um, five Seraphim, ten of Vitiates. Now, I joined the Palatine to them because I didn't have the Dialogus um, p combo with Triumph. I liked this. This was a great... I like no Vitiates at 85. Just 85 points for OC2. Sort of tough to kill. It's very nice. Two Emulators and an Assassin. So I went and played on TTS, and I played against Brian Sype, um, one of my Team America comrades and basically he had i didn't know what he was gonna play i just showed him the sisters list and he was like all right i'm gonna play some orcs and he's going to this gt with his work list so i was like bet we'll practice so he has this orc army which at first i thought was the same as Jax, and Jax is Jax is like all boys in trucks super msu and he's just brian busts out five trucks i'm like not this again and it's totally different brian to his credit has a totally different orc army it is like eight war bosses. It's it's like three mega bosses joined to three units of five mega knobs all in trucks. Two units of five knobs joined by war bosses in trucks. Uh, then he's got like 20 grots. He's got random storm boys. He's got a death killer war trike. Two beast bosses on squigasaurs. And like an orc army, it just run, it stages turn one and it wogs at you turn two. And of course it went first. So really just trying and trying again over here. Um, but now with a new refined list. So this, as a... Even into the um, the Orc Army, was, which was really telling, because the Orc Army was kind of what inspired the Demonifuge, because I was like, maybe I can slow down the Orc Onslaught by heroic intervening, always striking first, making them fight the wrong thing, um, you know, get some play going. 
She was useless. This, this, this was a useless unit. Um, it wasn't useless, useless. It actually just ate some charges for me, which is really nice. Anybody could have ate those charges. This didn't need to be eight assassinate points. Um, Solovol was fine. She didn't need to have her Paragon. She is worse without her Paragon. She doesn't reroll anything without her Paragons. I felt that. There was one time she got in combat and rolled three ones to hit and a two to wound when she needed a three. And I was like, what is happening? But she didn't die. Her gun was pretty, like, she shoots. Her shooting is credible. Um, I don't hate her at 125. Palatine. Combat Palatine, good. She great. Not going anywhere. Celestine, Solostine. Solostine's great. Don't need no girls to join her. Um, I learned in this game against Brian, he pointed out that I can, if I have Solostine, um, tank on Celestine. So what I can do, and she'll have four female pain as long as the Gemini's alive. So you can take your first important save on the Gemini, and once she's dead, then you start tanking on Celestine. Celestine's like, uh, 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 uh. But four female pain is pretty good. If she dies... That's terrible. Go get your Gemini. If she dies, well, she comes back to life, you know. And then your other Gemini heals. Um, so it's like that. But it's a nice little trick. Two by ten sisters. Twenty Archiflagents. Like I said, they were great. Sacrosins didn't do anything. Uh, unit of two Crusaders. This was aggressively fine. It walked onto the center objective and died. Um, to, it contested a Druk. What well, more could you ask? Um, we got two Exorcists. The exorcists were exactly what you'd expect exorcists to be, which if you have ever played with an indirect fire piece like an exorcist, you would know they're inconsistent and frustrating. So the very first game, first shot of the game, I shot my exorcist at a truck and aced it right out of existence, gone, poof, goodbye. And I was like, these are amazing. I've unlocked a new power level. No wonder Vic is running three. I'm just killing trucks out here from behind walls. And then the next... Five times I shot an exorcist across turn, 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 turn. I didn't kill anything. I didn't kill anything. I barely did damage to stuff. It was horrendous. It was paperweights. So this led me to down the path that exorcists were terrible. But um, it's obviously still an exorcist. So I think what I've learned is that exorcists are a three of and a build around, not a splash two of. I was thinking two could like add up and together maybe kill a tank without being a three. Or like two can over time deplete screens and just be that air level of indirect without having to pay for three. But it's like night spinner math, you know? You run one as a tech piece if you want to slow somebody down. In the exorcist case you want you run one as a tech piece if you wanna threaten people. And then probably you could have triumph in that army and on like turn four you can just be like you take five wounds from this exorcist. I didn't have to roll any dice there. Um, and that could be pretty good. But aside from that, I think you run three or you run one. One would try him three, and that's that. And I'm not sure I want to run three. I know it's a good. Um, I know it's good, but like I don't know that I want to just fall into the ways that is... 30 Archiflagellants and 3 Exorcists and you sit there and you shoot people with your indirect fire and when they come near you, you charge them with Archiflagellants. Um, I'm not trying to be dismissive of that strategy. I just don't know that I want to do it that way. Not yet, that, at least. 3 Penitent Engines. Um, solo. They were fine. They were aggressively fine. I could see going to 2. Started with 6. Well, actually, I started with 2. I started with Jeffrey's list. Jeffrey had 2 Mortifiers. So on from 2. Played 1 against Mark. Two to one to six to three, and I'm thinking going back to two. Interesting. Live Sarah from Pan Flamers, these are aggressively fine. Um, to a unit of ten sister novitiates. Uh, this was nice as a penalty joint if I'm not gonna do the dialogues combo, and I love that they're 85 points for OC2. The emulators are good. I like the emulators. Bring it down to something I need to be mindful of with this army. Um, but although not taking the paragons, I was fine with. Um, and honestly, there was a lot of mega knobs in my face and I just dealt with it. So like, it was fine. The emulators, I think, I think they're good. You do need some amount of emulator to split sisters up. I don't know what the emulator correct amount is. It might only be one. It might be two. It might be three, but I doubt it. I need to work on this. This is a part of the army I'm not sure about. And the Callous Assassin is good. I like her. She doesn't have to go anywhere. She goes up and down until it's safe. 
Moving forward. So, I just recorded a podcast with Vic, which will go live next Thursday, where he told me all about his sisters. That was this morning. Um, so you're literally watching it in real time. Like, um, Sunday I played Mark. Tuesday I played Jack. Wednesday night I played Brian and Sype with the Zorks on TTS. And Thursday, today, morning, I'm playing Vic. Or I'm talking to Vic. And Vic had a lot of great insights and taught me a lot of things about sisters and really like helped me see them in a different light. Um, just conversationally, how he's talking about using his units um, for unintuitive roles, like screening with Triumph and getting chaos with Space Marines to, you know, just eat the Chosen Charge. Some, stuff like that is not intuitive. Or pushing up with your Exorcist, pushing up with Triumph. It's, it's just nice to know that that is the right usage as opposed to just sitting back and relaxing with them. It's the balance of proactive versus reactive, that that conversation. So that is found on the Art of War 40K podcast. You can do that on AOW40K.com or Patreon. Um, it's a two-part show, so definitely recommend checking that out if you found this enjoyable whatsoever. This That show is just Sister's Knowledge out the wazoo, that episode. Um, obviously, I need to further develop my list. I don't think that list I used against Brian was perfect by any stretch, but it's something I want to work on. I think to exorcist or not to exorcist is a little fundamental for me right now, and I'm just not sure what I want to do with that answer. Um, I need to try the triumph again. I tried her against Jack, and Jack just ran me right over to the point where it didn't matter what the triumph was doing or not doing. I did like having her. I did. OC6 is good. She's kind of tough. I think I was, after talking to Vic, I think he's given me the juices to try triumph again. And game tracking. Question mark. Game tracking is not really a thing I do with any formality. Um, I make notes sometimes if I'm really serious after my games and put them in my phone. Um, but I'm just starting this faction. I have so far tracked all of my games. Um, I might start doing some form of game tracking in this series. If you would like to see that in any capacity, please let me know. And I'd be happy to think about how to add this to the series and probably will. So if you found the series enjoyable, uh, let me know in the Discord. Let me know in the YouTube comment section. Just message me whatever you, way you want. I'm having a really good time with this sister's army. It's really jiving with me. I'm having a great time producing this content. This is very passion-driven, so it's fun for me. Um, this is good stuff. This is really good stuff. And I'm learning a lot, and I'm exploring a lot. So if you like this kind of content, or if there's specific stuff you recommend or you want to see from this kind of content, please let us know in the comment section of the Discord channel. Um, if you hate this kind of content, it will make me sad, but I, I do need to hear it so we can make our content more tailored to what you actually like as the audience. So please do give me that feedback as well. Maybe so do so kindly. Thanks so much for listening, everybody, and we will catch you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.